There are many differences between male and female chickens, as the crest on the top of the head in the female is short compared to the male. The rooster is distinguished from the hen by its feathers, its long tail, its large size, and its ability to crow at any time. <coughs> as for reproduction between them, it takes place in a way that many are unaware of, even the farm owners themselves. This is why I will share it with you for your benefit. Insemination usually occurs in a natural or artificial way in some species. The rooster has a small reproductive organ that is filled with lymphatic fluid for erection and is the reproductive organ that he uses to transfer his sperm to the female, which stores it in a gland located at the top of the oviduct. This process takes from 10 to 30 minutes, only if there is no egg in the oviduct. Within 15 minutes, a number of sperm head to the female reproductive cell called the egg and then one sperm is able to unite with the cell and fertilization takes place. Insemination is successful when there are no obstructions in the oviduct that hinder sperm, and the most important obstacle is the presence of a fully formed egg with a hard shell in the compound or uterus area. Given that chickens lay eggs from early in the morning until just before noon, it has been found that the largest percentage of successful fertilization occurs after 10 o'clock in the morning, and the nature of the chicken helps determine the best time for insemination. After the hen lays her eggs, she emits some cries, and the rooster then rushes to inseminate her at a time when the oviduct is devoid of any eggs. In order to obtain highly fertilized eggs, roosters must be placed with females in a ratio of 6 to 8 females for each male. However, if the number of females allocated to one male exceeds this number, it will lead to a decrease in the fertility rate, which is an important matter that must be taken into account as it sometimes happens that some males die and the breeder does not replace them with new roosters, which leads to a decrease in fertility. I think I have talked about the rooster enough so that we can now move towards the hen and start with her reproductive system, which consists of two ovaries, each ovary containing several thousand eggs. When the hen reaches maturity, the egg begins to transform into the yolk, which emerges from its sac as soon as it is completed and is released from the ovary to the funnel of the oviduct. Both the hen and the rooster lack external reproductive organs, so the rooster jumps on the hen when mating and uses his claws to hold her back, so that his cloaca can touch the hen's cloaca with quick movements, so the sperm are transferred to the hen and remain active for two to four weeks. The cloaca is an external opening that poultry uses to eliminate of waste and mating at the same time. It is worth noting that a hen can lay eggs on her own without the need for the presence of a rooster and without mating occurring but in this case fertilization occurs and the eggs will not hatch to produce chicks. The egg begins its journey to the outside where the shell membrane is formed. The shell then forms and hardens and becomes ready for laying. It takes between 8 and 10 days for the egg to start forming until it is ready to be laid. The hen incubates the fertilized egg for usually 21 days, as the embryo during its development begins to absorb the egg yolk, which is made up of protein and fats. When it is ready to emerge, its size is so large that it fills the space of the egg except for the air chamber. After a series of contractions occur, the allantoic membrane breaks, which prompts the chick to begin breathing air. After 24 hours, it begins to peck the egg to break it. This process can take from 10 to 20 hours, after which the chick is able to emerge from the egg. He is then wet and tired, but at the same time he is fully developed and can see, and can walk and eat on his own immediately. Within two to four weeks, feathers begin to appear, and in the eighth week, his feathers become fully developed, and he reaches sexual maturity when he reaches the fifth month. Now that we have learned all this interesting information about chickens, we will move on to how to raise them and care for them. Chickens are one of the animals that can be raised at home, but a few main points must be taken into account, such as securing the appropriate place to raise them, choosing the appropriate type of chicken, and saving time to provide the best care for the chickens, in addition. To the type of nutrition suitable for it and many other points that we will summarize below, choose the appropriate breed of chicken according to your region because different breeds need different care and some need a warm climate while there are others that can withstand low temperatures. You can know the appropriate breed by observing the farmer and knowing the breed. Secondly, before you think about bringing chickens to your home to raise them, make sure that the municipality does not impose specific laws regarding raising chickens in the neighborhood in which you live. Determine the size of the coop according to the number of chickens you have and the available space. It is preferable to build it in a place where there is constant shade and sunlight during the day. There are several forms that you can adopt in construction, but the most important thing is to maintain continuous ventilation and make the coop a comfortable place for the chickens to sleep and not you forget to make boxes for her to lay eggs in, because the hen lays an egg every day. And a bowl to drink water from. 
Make sure to protect the chicken from other animals such as dogs, cats, and birds of prey such as the eagle, owl, and others, especially small chicks. Fifth, chicken food. Chickens eat growing herbs such as buckwheat, clover, all types of broad-leaved herbs, plant seeds, and grains. They also eat insects, earthworms, slugs of all kinds, and food waste such as garlic, beans, onions, citrus fruits, and raw potatoes. All of these foods are good for chickens except raw potatoes because they it is possible to cause chicken poisoning. It is preferable to scatter cracked or dormant grains such as barley, wheat, oats, and corn on the ground for the chickens daily. As for the food for the chicks, it is somewhat different, as it must be sound and free of rot so as not to cause them diseases. The best food for the chicks is regular fodder. Its own, which can be purchased from one of the stores that sell it. Sixthly, there is the possibility that chickens may be infected with some bacterial or other diseases, so you must consult a veterinarian if you notice the presence of a disease in the chicken coop, and you can ask him about the vaccinations and medications that you must give to the chickens on a regular basis. My friends, we have reached the end of the video. If you are an animal lover, we would be honored to have you join us and subscribe to the channel, and do not forget to tell us your opinions and suggestions in the comments.